Hello, it's Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. I will start with some music talk and then I will, if I don't forget some things I want to say, I will rant later. That way if you want to avoid hearing my personal stuff, um, you don't have to. So if I'm trying to remember, I get a lot of comments, all kinds. I do still delete comments, I do, but um, some that I remember, someone mentioned recently the album that they thought I would like, Ramesses Space Hymns. Um, yes, I've known about this album for years, but I've never owned the Fold Out, you know, the collectible one. There's a story, an interesting story about this record and its making and the people behind it on YouTube, you know, look it up, Ramesses Space Hymns. Um, folks from 10CC were involved in this, yeah. Eric Stewart, Lol Crane, Kevin Godley, Graham Goldman. So it's really well crafted and um, it's spacey, but there's also pop elements here. Um, I haven't played this in a while, so I'm gonna leave this out. I've also had a couple folks um, ask me for uh, some about the new Tool release, and um, thought I'd talk about that for a second. Um, I like Tool, but I'm not into the hype. There's something dark about Tool, and I get a I get a sense that the band, although they're good, there's something deceptive about the band. I can't put my finger on it. One thing for sure is that they um, are capitalizing upon the hype from the fans. The fans have made them larger than life. So the fact that they're making a new album is just, you know, it's this thing, you know, in the media. Which kind of turns me off. Maybe if I were experiencing something of that, of my own, I'd feel differently. But looking at it from the outside, it's like, what's really going on here? Part of why I said it is because the new Tool logo, every time I look at it, it looks like it also says Fool. I, I you know, I don't know, but I, for those guys to be as smart as they appear to be, to not see that, that they don't see that, that that's not there, I'm making it up, I don't know, but I sure see it. I see Tool, then I see Fool, okay? Now I have Tool music. I ended up with a copy of this when it came out as a promo. My brother gave it to me when he was working for a record distribu distributor. I didn't like it, and I got rid of it. And I have this now because I, in the last couple of years, came across another copy of it um, sealed for next to nothing, so I bought it. I still don't think much of this at all. I have seen Tool Live, so I get it. I do like them. The album of theirs that I like is Lateralis. Lateralis. Is that the one? And then I have this one. I even have to look this up. It's the picture disc uh, version of this particular album. Is this, um, yeah, Lateralis. La Lateralis, however you say this. I like this album, but I have to be in the mood for it. The band grinds along to me. It's like there's a, there's a subtle intricacy to their music and the timing and stuff and the new song that we've heard um there are new intricacies to the sound and um maynard's voice but if i were buying records if i had if i had disposable income now would the new tool record be on my buying list no i need to hear some more of it but uh, I also have a thousand days. I have the one with the looking glasses. It's up here on a shelf. Don't need to show it, do I? Um, I appreciate Tool, but I do think they're um, they're doing a good job of um, taking advantage of the gullibility of the of the public. Okay, I like Danny Carey's drumming. Someone sent this to me years ago. I forget who. Someone sent this to me, and I appreciate it. Volto. This is a project with um, 
Danny Carey on drums from Tool. And, I, and what I like the most about this is his drumming. So that's what I have to say about the new Tool. I, I, I would like to hear more. They did impress me in, co in concert. They were, they were powerful. I, I, I like the um, interplay. But no, I don't, they don't even, they don't, they do not rate in my, on my list of great bands for Derek Higgins. They're not on my list, no. Nope. Played this last night. Um, my pot copy is all water damaged. Azimuth, Brazilian uh, fusion band. Altubro. And, um. I just really like Brazilian music. It's just so full of life. This is great. This is great music. It really is. It's kind of up. Just go through these records that I have played recently. Here's a record I bought a while back because I've always been interested in kind of unusual stuff. So I take chances. It's a band called Bride of Nono. Bride of Nono, Bon Appetit. Um, where are they from? I listened to this all the way through twice recently because I said I've got to make sure what I think of this band. And this was recorded in Chicago. This is kind of quirky. The music is a bit of a mismatch of... Oh, almost like Sonic Youth, but then, excuse me, also kind of angular and rough. Um, but the vocals, the female vocals after a while are absolutely grating, and it seems like it's on purpose. So, this was an interesting listen, but ultimately, I don't know that I would recommend this for anyone. I don't know that I think this is really all that good. I can tell that they're, the concept that they were going for, they realized it, or whether they're, they can play. And like I said, the music is somewhat engaging. It's kind of noisy and scratchy and push and pulley. But the vocals, after a while, it's like, I can't take this anymore. Can't take it anymore. This is an interesting album, Duncan Brown. Now, this is one of those kind of albums where it looks like the record company and maybe the artist agreed that their whole appeal is their sex appeal, you know. Look at how good this guy looks, you know. There's no indication of the music by this cover. But this is a good album that is close to being progressive. Simon Phillips is on drums. These are pop songs that get intricate. And um, I also have to say that the words of these songs, I think, are really terrible, actually. You know, I'm just really, it's the music to me, okay? Now, I can go a whole nother different direction. I think I'll remember to pull the record, because I played this and I put it away, okay? So I'm always talking about how I'm not into lyrics, mostly, because a lot of lyrics are trite, and it's the same shit over and over again. This is a good example. Really interesting music, Duncan Brown. I think this is his fourth album, Streets of Fire. And you can find this for nothing. I think it will surprise some of you. It's really quite good musically. Interesting. But last night I pulled this. I don't know why it takes me forever to play Roy Harper. I really like Roy Harper. And he is someone whose words catch me. You know, his wordsmithing. Um, he comes from that era in the 60s. You know, going all the way back to Jackson C. Frank and the days of Bob Dylan. I, I rate Roy Harper in the same category as Bob Dylan. Like I like him more, although I really do understand the greatness of Bob Dylan's writing. I do understand that. I do. And I do have Bob Dylan in the collection, but it's in the closet, not in the shelves. This is killer. It's a, it's a rocking album. Uh, I didn't stop to remind myself last night, who the hell is playing all that hot guitar player on here? And, uh, yeah, 
He's got great players on there. Bill Bruford, David Gilmore is on here, John Paul Jones. Yeah, and you know there's a long-standing connection between Roy Harper and Led Zeppelin. Hats off to Roy Harper on what, Led Zeppelin 3? This is a great album. Musically, um, lyrically, and just Roy Harper is great. He's a great artist you should know about. Something else I played that has held up well over time. It's only been like a few years. But Adams for Peace. Tom York. Um, he's such a nerd. He, I, I really like Tom York. I would love to meet him. Um, he is really into making art and music. And so he never stops. And he's good. Judge, Jury, and Executioner. Very cool song. With Flea on bass. Really cool. Eric, thank you for this. I've listened to it a little bit. i got to be in the mood for Feral Sanders. Much respect for Feral Sanders. His, my favorite album by him is Thembi. This one is a journey, okay? This one is a journey. Upper Egypt, Lower Egypt, you know what I'm saying? This is very spiritual. And so um, when I put it on, it was like it was basically demanding me to go there with him. Go with me, come, come on, come on. And that's powerful, and so it's a great testament to the power of this music. But it also tells me it's like it's something that I will most appreciate when I'm in the mood for it. Thank you, Eric, so much for that. A little more information for you. Um, my latest release on vinyl is this Planisphere um, record picture disc put out by Numero Group. I have one track on here. This was just released. I'm bringing this up because I just received my first um, royalty notice from the label. And it was um, indeed a wake-up call about the reality of the music business, which is tough. So I was paid in an advance a couple years ago for them to um, obtain the rights to use this song. If you understand the music business, you understand that an advance is an advance. It's a loan. So my first statement, they show me how many of these have sold and how much I owe them. Okay? That's the hard part about the music business. So I was really excited to do this deal with the label, but I may end up ending money. So buy this. Plain and simple. Buy it. You're um, music lovers and you're vinyl collectors, here's a picture disc with me on it, one of my old tracks from the early 80s, Dream Music. Grab this. Pick it up. Okay? Okay, I'll just go a little bit further. Pulled this, um, sometimes when I'm going to bed, I'll decide to just put on something in as I'm going to bed. Because I've got a bunch of music in the bedroom, because I'm out of, there's music in every room. So I played this under Underworld uh, CD single, Cowgirl. It's not exactly music to go to sleep by, but um, I wasn't really, that wasn't the purpose. The purpose was to listen to it, you know, as I got tired. I love Underworld. Big, dancey, trancey, techno, big beat. They really got it down, like, wonderfully well. The whole way that you build up the beat slowly, and then boom, you know, and it explodes, and the audience goes nuts. It's really fun to listen to as well, Underworld. I have this box of singles out. I have singles all over the house because I'm out of room. Um, and I was getting into some YMO and Sakamoto. This box, this is my Yellow Magic Orchestra Beatles box. So it's, um, and Catherine Wheel. So I was, I had pulled this actually, Sakamoto's first single, uh, Lexington Queen, Warhead. And uh, this is cool. It's a good song, but it's also collectible. It's on purple vinyl. I 
after I discovered Yellow Magic Orchestra back in the 80s, it was at a time when I was still really into the idea of um, following people and finding people to love and admire and collect. And so when I got turned on the Yellow Magic Orchestra, I just went whole hog trying to find their stuff. Here's a Japanese single of uh, Forbidden Colors, uh, Sakamoto and David Sylvian. Fantastic song. Sakamoto and David Sylvian's Bamboo Houses, Bamboo Music single. Great songs. Would have loved to have heard a whole album up from this period. Excuse me, by them. Frontline, Sakamoto. Love Sakamoto. One, one more from this. With Imawana Imawana Kiyosiro. Japanese pop singer of note. Those are some of those in picture disc, stepping into Asia. That's the Sakamoto part. In front of that is the YMO. Yellow Magic Orchestra. I've got singles of theirs. Love this. I love YMO still. And um, they really were influential um, in a lot of ways beyond what people really realize. I just learned some things about how <coughs> Hosono worked with the, the R&B act three degrees. I didn't know that. And I didn't realize that, you know, uh, that Eric Clapton uh, covered Behind the Mask. I heard it finally. It's like it's terrible for my ears. It's terrible. Then we get back here. Okay, so besides that, I have this box. Some of my favorites. These are some of my favorite bands. See, see like I rate Catherine Wheel far high, much higher. It's a different band than Tool, but as far as my respect and what the music does for me, Catherine Wheel is um, head and shoulders above bands like Tool to me. I love Catherine Wheel. I have most of their records. Masala Tuda. They, you know. They're, they, they, they should have been huge. Amazing band. I say the same thing, the same thing about the House of Love. Love the House of Love. Shine On. The Girl with the Loneliest Eyes. Shine On. G Guy Chadwick, the, the uh, main writer. This one is a, sing a solo single of his. You really got a hold on me. Is this one colored vinyl? Yeah. I love music. I love music. I love music. I love what I love. I love what I love. And this, mu this is my music. Yes, the whole thing about color does come up a lot in my videos. Because it's just something that... that living here in Omaha, Nebraska... If you have never been here, you really don't understand how how racist it is and how every time I go out in public and interact with the public, I am confronted with racism every day. And then past that, we get, oh yeah, this Julian Cope is in here. Teardrop explodes. And then we get back into my uh, Beatles and Pink Floyd Beatles and Pink Floyd singles. And then back here in the Beatles. What do we have here in the Beatles section? From their second album, I believe. Here's uh, some jukebox singles. This one is Baby You're a Rich Man, All You Need Is Love. On pink vinyl. Beatles. Love the Beatles. I love the Beatles. I do. So that's that's a bunch of music for you, okay? And um, so now I want to just um, just rant a little bit. So that's your cue. If you don't want to hear the rant, you can go now. So I deleted a couple of um, comments from my video yesterday, and I blocked one person. That person may be pissed and may think low of me, but I really do not appreciate, nor do I care, 
to have anyone tell me, well, I don't think what you're saying is, and I don't think, I don't care. Here's what you, you must understand. Here in cyberspace, unless there's an actual connection to who you are, I don't, you, you in many ways don't exist to me. So coming and being critical of me and telling me that, you know, that you don't think I'm thinking right or what I'm saying is wrong, that alone is like, it just, it's irritating. It's like, you don't know me and I don't know you, you know, so, so, um, I, uh, just, um, I have, I have what, I have my perspective. I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I know better than to say I'm right and you're wrong or you're wrong and I'm right. That's ridiculous. And so when people come and tell me, well, I don't think that your view on this is right or I think you're lumping things in one big basket and that's wrong. Well, you can say that, but that's not what I think. And so this is what I'm saying. Don't come and... It feels like you're trying to correct me or telling me, well, you're thinking wrong. Well, you're no authority. No one is an authority. That's really kind of where I'm at now. It's like the world is in such sad shape. To try to tell me that anyone, regardless of their level of information, knowledge, um, in, uh, education, that someone's opinion or what they say is what I should be thinking, hell no. Give me information and I'll decide what I think. Okay. That's kind of where I'm at. So, so if you're an, an anonymous person, I don't know you personally, and you feel the need to share something along those lines with me, I'm telling you that my reaction is going to be what it is. And depending on what you say to me, I may just erase, delete it. And uh, the person I blocked, it was really obvious that the person was trolling me. Not obvious. No, I'll just say that the interaction was not friendly. This person's criticism wasn't to help me. I didn't see any help in it. And I'll accept helpful criticism, but to just say you don't like what I say or think that I'm wrong, I don't particularly care. I don't. What is this sticking out here? Is that arrogant and cocky? I really don't care if it comes off like that. This is where I'm at, okay? I think it's a I think it's fine, you know, to just be who you are and just say to people, don't tell me who to be. I had another one where I deleted it where the person I think was trying to be kind, but it was bullshit. You know, you're better than that. You don't know me and you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. And someone else telling me turn the TV off. I don't watch television. This isn't based on watching television. This is based on my experience going out into the world as well as information I'm getting through media. I don't have cable. I don't have satellite. All I have is the internet. So my angst is not about watching TV. That's why those that's why that pisses me off when people just make assumptions. Just come here and assume, oh, he's watching too much TV. You don't fucking know what I do over here. Yeah, that pisses me off. Assumptions make an ass out of you and me. Get that, okay? So, again, anyone that doesn't know me come stepping to me trying to tell me my business. I'm going to tell you to fuck off. Straight up. Even though I espouse the four agreements and try to live by it, I'm human. And I get fed up. And I do get to the point where it's like I'm... I'm going to show some emotion, okay? I always try to return to this knowledge of try to not take things personally and all that stuff, you know? It's tough. It is. This doesn't look like I'm waiting for a call from Social Security. I'm, I've applied for Social Security, and now I'm getting through is impossible. Dealing with the government and 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 officials every time I go there that's why I'm like I am it's like it's always a complete mess nothing is like it's supposed to be and yet we're on the bottom end we're the ones who always get the fallout but the government 
It's like I have till Friday to get through, but I can't get through. And yet, if I don't get through, then it'll be on me. See what I'm saying? So, that my life experience has everything to do with the way I see things and why I'm not having anyone else come here and tell me what I'm supposed to see and say. Get that, okay? This was what was... I haven't played this in a long time, but Earth. Extra Capsular Extraction. Okay, that means I need to play that. I appreciate your comments, folks. Please understand, I'm an individual. Don't take personally who I am. You're not here in this house with me. You, if you've ever met me, just try to understand I'm just being me. So get get that straight, you know. Just, you know, spend time with me. But please don't come over here trying to tell me my business. What's your business? Are you together? Are you, you know, you're pointing at... You're pointing your finger at me, but do you have your shit together? All right, talk to you later. No, I don't have my shit together. I'm just living, trying to be a decent human being. That's why I just, you know, I'm just saying, I'm, saying, I'm always saying, cut the bullshit, people. Take a look at yourselves. The average person does not. The average person is really pretty um, um, clueless. Don't be like that.